Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 2 of our Cucumber with Selenium video series. And in this video we'll be talking about writing a simple code for Cucumber with Selenium. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch section 1 and part 1 of this particular video series. Alright, so let's get started. Let's all help to save tree, water and energy to save our motherly earth. So this is not just for today, it's also for our future. So let's all try to do it as much as possible. So for writing a simple code, let's flip to IntelliJ and see how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ. So this is the same project which we were working in our previous video of this particular video series. So what we did in our previous video was we just executed the two lines of code. One was adding the web driver over here and in the hook we just added the Firefox driver which is nothing but the support with Geeko driver, right? And then we saw how things works. We also navigated to the Exit Automation website over here. But right now what we're going to do is we are going to write some actual code. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to enter the username and password for our login page and see how things work. So instead of working with the scenario outline, I'm just going to get rid of the scenario because it's going to navigate, perform the operation too many times. So control alt B for going over here for this particular line of code. And again, I'm going to remove these lines of code, which is completely not required. So I'm just going to remove the common dot code over here. And then for the username and password, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter the values right so maybe let the file will be there and I will just enter the username and password so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter the username and password so for doing that I am going to first identify the username and password text box I guess the name of the text box is going to be username and the password name of the text box is actually password so which is pretty straightforward it's a dummy website so I'm going to do is base dot driver dot find element by dot name and the name I'm going to pass is username and I'm just going to do a send keys of the user dot username. Remember this is the same code which we were working in our section one of this particular video series. So I'm just going to use the same thing this time as well. So just going to paste it over here. So find by name as password and here the data which I'm going to pass from the data table is going to be the password. So again this values are actually coming from this particular table right. So I'm just going to save it right now and now it should actually enter the username and password for me in that particular text box if everything is correct. And the last operation which we need to do is to uh, click the login button and see if the user form page is being displayed. In the particular page. So for doing that again I have to go to the implementation so I can do it via control alt B to go to the step definition right. So I'm just going to delete this line of code and to click the login button we'll see what is the name of this particular button. I guess the name of this button is going to be login. So let's again do this base dot driver dot find element by name and I'm just going to say login and since the button type is actually submit I'm just going to call the submit this time. So I'll just call the submit method there we go and let's try to write the last step which is going to be and I see the and I should see the user form page right. So I'm just going to go over this particular line and here I should see, so once I log in, I should see, let's say the initial text box, right? Or maybe the Excel automation Selenium test site or maybe the user form, this particular heading. Let me see. Okay. So we can go over here and we can find that. So either this or maybe I can do this very, very simple thing just the initial text box and because we're going to identify this particular control as well. So I'm just going to copy and this time it is ID. 
So I'm just gonna say base dot driver dot find element by dot ID of this dot. I'm just gonna say if it really exists. So I'm just gonna say displayed, right? So if it is displayed, then you can just do an assert. I'm just gonna use the J unit assert this time. So assert dot assert equals or whatever it is. So I expect it to be true. And then I need to pass the message here is if it is failed, then I should say that it's not displayed something like that All right here we go and I guess it's not like C sharp so I'm just going to cut this particular uh, piece of code over here and maybe just tell it that and here the message will actually sit in here oops I'm sorry it should be assert dot or assert equals maybe yep all right, there we go. So I'm just gonna save it. And right now, if I try to run this particular feature and see it should actually open the website and it should enter the username and password, it should click the submit button or the login button. And then it should also assert that particular initial text box is being displayed or not. So let's cross the finger and see how it works. All right, it's entering the username and password. And hopefully the test got passed as well. I can see the tick out there. There we go. The test got passed and everything's working fine. So this is how you can write a very, very simple code with the help of Selenium and with Cucumber. So this is the first time we are actually seeing after 12 parts how we can integrate Selenium with Cucumber and run the whole actually running code with the feature file and the step definition. So this is how you can actually integrate. So in the next video, we'll write a small page object model and then we'll try to retrieve the objects from the pages, rather writing this way where you can see that all the objects identifications are being done within the login step itself. So instead of doing it over here, I'm actually going to do with a page object model. Again, page object model is something which we have already discussed in our Exit Automation video series so many times. So you can actually go back and see those videos in our Exit Automation channel. So that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.